On your mark, get set, go! Every year since 1978, the residents of Banner Elk, North Carolina, race woolly bear caterpillars. Like the infamous groundhog of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, the winning animal is deemed a prognosticator of the coming winter weather. You may have heard this myth. The woolly bear caterpillar body has 13 segments, and you can actually count the segments. The more brown on the woolly bear, the milder the coming winter. And the more black segments, the harsher it will be. So how did the larva of a moth become a pop culture prophet? And if animals can detect earthquakes or rainstorms, could there be any truth to the myth? We are at Bear Mountain State Park in the lower Hudson Valley, about 40 miles north of New York City. We do see woolly bears, especially this time of year, you see them trying to find their winter retreats. They generally want to get underneath something to spend the winter. It could be a piece of wood, a log, a rock. They actually have an adaptation where they have cryoprotectants circulating in their body that, that keep them from fully freezing and it protects their tissues from damage when it gets below zero. Uh, we have miles and miles of roads that pass through the extensive park system and that's a good place to encounter woolly bears. It was on the roads of Bear Mountain on a warm fall day in 1948 that Dr. Howard Coran, the curator of entomology at the American Museum of Natural History, along with his colleagues, conducted the first informal study of the woolly bear's predictive powers. A reporter at the New York Herald Tribune accompanied the group, noting that they gathered 15 fine woolly bears. And even though they were out for woolly bears, the scientists decided it was safe to take their wives along. The story took off and garnered national attention. And he carried it on for about eight years from the late 40s into the early 50s. And I think he, he, he designed it really just to have a pleasant foray up to Bear Mountain each fall. There's just one problem. Intuitively, I would find it difficult to believe. Dr. Jack Lane of Slippery Rock University researches woolly bears and other freeze-tolerant creatures. You see a lot of variability among individuals, even in the same year. I would expect to be collecting maybe 100 or more from an individual population in order to try to get a feel for what the band dynamics are. And then, of course, you want to look across a number of uh, neighboring geographic areas. You really need to collect a large amount of data over many, many different years. So if Dr. Curran's study isn't valid, then where does that leave the myth? You know, I haven't seen evidence to disprove the woolly bear hypothesis, but honestly, that science is out on that one. But wait, before you label science a buzzkill, here's a few reasons to love the woolly bear's fuzz. They're brown and black, and that's usually a warning to potential predators that I'm not very good to eat. And then you get a mouthful of hairs if you do try to eat them. These hairs, or CT, don't keep the caterpillar warm like fur they actually help to freeze it. It turns out the bristles trigger uh, freezing of water at temperatures that are just a little bit below zero degrees centigrade. The advantage here is it allows the caterpillar to freeze more predictably. And that's a prediction the woolly bear can actually use. You see, recent studies have shown that each time the woolly bear has to thaw and freeze, there are energy costs to repair damaged cells and reboot their systems. These specialized CT allow the woolly bear to begin the freezing process outside of its body, away from its cells, and then hopefully stay in a frozen state longer. So the bristles and bands of the woolly bear protect it from predators and help to control its cryogenic slumber. But Dr. Lane suggests there may be one more plausible benefit to the bristles and bands. So they're probably a little bit more tolerated simply because people find them sort of a cute and quaint animal. So the legend just adds a little bit more to their affection for the caterpillars. Now that's a charming survival strategy. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.